we're about to tell people advice, okay? And here's the advice we're going to give it to Joe and Matt, okay? You guys have to understand in this business that you're creating, both of you have to understand marketing and enjoy working in your your marketing to grow a much bigger business in the future, okay? Which is basically what Rob and I have done, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So it's really about not just knowing how to do this, and do that. It's really about learning how to be a marketer, okay? And so, because with that said, with that said, you'll eventually build a much, much bigger business other than just doing a podcast. Boom, 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 boom. What's up, everybody? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your boys, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. Check it. Wiki. Welcome back to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. We are back. We are back. This time with, uh, we've had a lot of legends on the show and and we are graced with another. Another legend. As well. Um, yeah, so this is a duo podcast, but Bill Glazer is, um, is this legend that really has helped shape us as yeah. marketers and entrepreneurs like from day one. Yeah, he was one of the first guys we followed online and you'll hear us tell that story to Bill Oof. Uh, in the so beginning cool. of this episode. But um yeah, I mean, we cover a lot of... And Rob Cuesta, I don't want to leave you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Bill Glazer like, and Rob on. Cuesta. There's, yeah. It's a twofer on this one. Yeah, so Rob is is Bill's partner, and, and you'll hear their whole story, so we don't need to go into it here, but they're teamed up, and that's why they're on this podcast. You kind of hear from both sides, and they're a good duo, so you'll see. But yeah, Bill, I mean, he it, he's a legend to us, and, and definitely, you know, we were members of GKIC for the longest time. Yeah. Um, and you'll hear all about that in this episode. Yeah. So in this episode, you're going to get kind of the story behind GKC, how it happened. You're going to hear how Rob ended up uh, partnering with Bill. Mm -hmm. And then Bill actually breaks down his seven, nay, eight <laughs> steps. Wow. To outrageous really marketing. in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, 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 was, I was stoked on how open uh, Bill was as well, ta yeah. telling about how he actually met dan kennedy yeah if you think about that and his gkic story like how he actually started with uh in business with dan kennedy so i haven't heard these stories before super yeah. cool so i think we just dive right in oh, yeah. oh uh they have a, a an online event actually happening yeah. and that's happening in november 16th through the 18th and this is this is an event that's definitely different than the others out there that i've heard of yeah um, i think it's what 25 plus speakers and these are people like dean jackson um, I think Mike Koenigs is on mm -hmm. there. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Marisa Murgatroyd, mm -hmm. uh, who's been on the podcast. Of course, the two of these guys, Bill and Rob, um, uh, I, they name other folks. But basically, it's a killer event, and you should check it out. And the URL, Matt. The URL is hustleandflowchart.com slash outrageous. Um, if you don't know how to spell outrageous, well, it's O-U-T-R-A-G-E-O-U-S. But if you still <laughs> don't know how to spell it, you can go to the show notes page of this episode. We'll also link to it there. The event's November 16th through 18th. That's hustleandflowchart.com slash outrageous. Yeah. And uh, two quick things. One, make sure you get the notes on this episode. Hustleandflowchart.com slash comp. We took notes on this episode like we do every episode. And final thing. Yes. Final H thing. Refs. Our sponsor, our lovely sponsor, Hrefs, who happens to be our uh, favorite SEO tool. Yep. Previous of them ever becoming a sponsor. And that is the truth. The truth. Um, but little known thing is that you can use that. So it's not just for Google, mm -hmm. but you can like, so discovering keywords and opportunities and seeing where you rank and all that stuff. You could actually do it for other quote unquote search engines, places like YouTube Amazon and a slew of others that and being in Yahoo and Yandex and some other ones we can't pronounce, but main ones Google, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube and Amazon. So if you're you know if you're a, a creator or a tuber, mm -hmm. you can use this to start discovering just like you would with with uh, keywords on Google. I mean, yep. it's just a search engine for video. So and Absolutely. same with Amazon too. Yep, so. and they got a seven dollar seven day trial. So if you go to yeah. hrefs dot com, that's a h r e f s dot com. It's seven dollars seven days. Go get it. We love it. We use it. I think you should too. It's a, it's kind of a no brainer thing. So check it out. Thank you for uh, hanging with us, and let's get over to Bill and Rob. All right, guys, we're live. Thank you both for being here, Bill and Rob. Uh, how how are things going? Very good. Thank you. It's uh, it's uh, it's a sunny day up here in Toronto for a change. What about? <laughs> <laughs> I would say the only other thing where I'd add to this is that Rob and I are working like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, do you, what are you guys focused on right now? I know you have a handful of things in the mix going on. 
The big um, thing is the, uh, the, uh, the, the Outrageous Summit, the uh, Outrageous Marketers Live Online event that we've got coming up in November. That's keeping us both very busy, isn't it, Bill? Yeah, I would say that. And the fact that we also have our new company is called The Alliance, and we continually get more members in there, okay? Mm. And uh, so it's sort of like my old company way, way back in the day uh-huh. when I had a lot of members, and now we're building another business with creating a lot of members. And and members, from my perspective, and I'm sure Rob agrees with me, members is really the future, okay? That's of getting more people to purchase new things and on and on and on. Mm. So the Alliance, uh, give us the scoop of what that is. This is the first time I've heard of the Alliance. Um, well, Rob, you want to explain to them about that? <laughs> sure. Um, I, well, well, after we published the two outrageous campaigns books, we, which we'll yep. mention later on, I'm sure, um, we sat down and we thought, well, it's one thing to tell people that they've got to do outrageous marketing, but it's another thing to actually get them to do it. Um, and so we, we realized the best way to get people actually creating their outrageous campaigns and standing out and everything else was just to create a, a, the, a program that we call the Outrageous Marketers Alliance, where they get pretty much uh, constant contact with Bill, with Bill's daughter Mara, and with me to guide them in creating their campaign. It's, uh, you know, people can talk to us directly. And each month we bring in experts who teach them another aspect of marketing that's working now. So we've always got people who are bringing stuff right up to date. And then um, the idea is just to keep them moving, keep people creating something. And you know, particularly in times like this, that's become even more important is to just keep doing things and not allow all the nuttiness and the bad news to get on top of you. Yeah. No, that's that's good. You're supporting them, and I know your books too. You know the outrageous, the multi-step marketing campaigns with the multiple vol- volumes. There's like what forty plus different campaigns people could just swipe and deploy right from the book. Yeah, right. so, yeah, you're right. and and even the book before that, even so, was even more campaigns. Wow. And and I just want to mention to make a little cr- clarity on something about Rob was saying is the thing that I really love the alliance is that people can send us their campaigns and that we'll critique them for them, okay? Ooh. And I basically have never done that before. Even when I owned a much larger business, we wouldn't send people's campaigns and critique it for them. And it was really after Rob and I talked about it, we decided that this is something that we should really provide for people in order to actually build a much bigger business for themselves. And of course, Rob, you also mentioned that my daughter, Mara, mm-hmm. and I think I think some of you guys already met Mara. Yeah, we, we, know, Mara. we know her. And uh, I right. did want to shout out Mara as a thank you for making this happen and AJ Roberts, uh, all of our mutual friends from uh, Kartra. Yeah. So that's, that's why we're chatting. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, th- this right. interview is kind of like a, a cool sort of full circle moment for us because um, back in probably 2009-ish, mm-hmm. one of the first few products Joe and I ever bought around marketing was the the GKIC membership. And when we got the the first newsletter, we looked in the back of the newsletter and we, we learned that there was local chapters of the GKIC membership. So we found out that there was a San Diego chapter that was run by a guy named Henry Evans at the time. Before that, it was Ed Rush. Mm-hmm. And um, nice. we went and showed up to that San Diego meeting and it just took us down this whole rabbit hole of the GKIC world. We were subscribers of the newsletter for what? Three, maybe four years? I'd probably much longer. I don't know. It felt like a long <laughs> time, but that was like our... I felt like that was the the foundation of our marketing education, you know, back in uh, yeah, oh eight, oh nine. Yeah, it led us to going to all the info summits and super conferences and all that kind of stuff. So having the opportunity to 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 chat with Bill on this podcast is just a like a, a sort of surreal moment because of our our beginnings with that newsletter. Um, right, right. But but I want to I want to kind of go back on on let's start with Bill and, and talk about your story a little bit. I know you kind of you, you worked with your father a bit before getting into marketing, and so. What, what was your sort of story there? What were you doing before marketing? How did you transition into the marketing world? Well, firstly, I went to college <laughs> okay, <laughs> before that. And then at, when I finished going through college, okay, my, son, my father said to me, you know, he had a menswear store. Mm-hmm. And he said, why don't you join here? Okay, so I was in the menswear business, okay? And I was in the menswear business, I would say, for about 25 years. 
okay with him okay and eventually he passed away mm -hmm. towards the end but regardless of that um it was somewhere in the late 1990s maybe about 96 okay a good friend of mine who was in the men's room business also uh by the way i knew other people other than men's room people <laughs> <laughs> this guy, good, good style <laughs> you're good was, yeah he was in philadelphia okay and i'm i'm a, and i i'm in baltimore and he said to me one day, he said to me, Bill, we're having this huge event there in Philadelphia. Why don't you get on a plane and go over there, okay? And we'll go together and we'll listen to these great presentations, okay? And um, and by the way, one of the one of the one of the best presenters that were there, a guy named Zig Ziglar, okay, mm -hmm. okay. And actually, I'll be talking about that while we're on this podcast for a second. But at the very end, there was this last presentation, and there's this guy named Dan Kennedy, okay. Mm -hmm. And he was selling a product. Okay, so if you know Dan Kennedy, he's nice enough to take money from people. Okay, <laughs> and, and and so at the end, he was uh, selling this product called um, Magnetic Marketing. Okay, mm -hmm. it was two hundred at that time. It was two hundred ninety-seven dollars. Okay, and so and so anyway, so I bought the product, and the product I started using that to help my menswear business. Okay, and then two weeks after that. This, the, the same event was having in Baltimore, okay? And by that time, if you know Dan Kennedy, he was nice enough to send me over um, his magnetic marketing, his uh, newsletter, okay? And on the newsletter, it said he's coming in Baltimore. And if any of you guys are going to be there, you know, make sure you let me know and I'll give you a ticket to go for free, okay? So, and for of course, the first thing I did was I asked him for the free ticket, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and the next thing I know, he calls me, okay? And he said, oh, by the way, by the way, when I asked for the ticket, I also said to him, I'm already a member of your business, okay? And I said, I'd like to take you out to dinner because you've helped me so much. And he calls me back and he says to me, Bill, he's, first of all, he says to me, Bill, I can't have dinner with you because as soon as I present, I'm going to go home, okay? But if you want to, we can have lunch, okay? So I said to Dan Kennedy, I said, Dan, by that time, it was Mr. Kennedy, by the way. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> and I said to Mr. Kennedy, I says, I, I definitely would love to have lunch with you, okay? And by the way, I said to Dan, I said, Dan, by the way, don't think like I'm going to bring over all this stuff, my marketing that I'm doing, and then you can, I can how I showed all your, your things in my, my business. And Dan said the words to me that I never forget. He says, Dan, if you don't bring over everything I do, you're just stupid. <laughs> so, wow. so I brought over this big pile of stuff that I did, okay? And I showed him everything I'm doing, okay? And then as he's going through everything and showing me everything, he said to me, by the way, at the end, I have something to ask you. And so at the end, I asked him the question. I said, what should I do? He said, you should help other men's work businesses to grow their business as well. He says, and if you want, I'll help you to put it together, okay? Mm. And also, at, at when you all you put it together, you could become a member in my mastermind group. That was Dan's mastermind group, okay? Mm. And so, so the next thing I know, I'm giving Dan Kennedy a big check yep. <laughs> to put this day together <laughs> for two different perspectives, one to create the business, and the other thing was to pay him for in the mastermind group. Okay? Yeah. And I was in his mastermind group for about, five years until all of a sudden he said to me, Bill, you're doing such a good job. Can I just sell you my business and I'll help you? We'll run it together. Wow. So that's how I got involved with Dan Kennedy. We, we At that time, the business was called Glazer Kennedy Insider mm -hmm. Circle, which you guys probably knew. GKIC. And I probably... Yeah. And I probably presented there, maybe in Europe, you when, did. when you were there. Yeah, mm -hmm, right, right. And um, and by the way, the guy that runs, I think he still runs it. He's a great guy, as you know. Yep. In the, in the, yeah, yeah. Henry Evans. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's really – now, here's a great example of a guy who really pays attention and learns how to market things, okay, mm -hmm. which is a great example for him. And by the way, if you ever talk to him, just tell him I said hi again. I will. And I talked to him just the other day and I, I said, we we're going to have a chat. So yeah, I'll, I'll clip this out for him too. I love it. Great, great, great. Thank you. So anyway, so anyway, so that's how things started moving along. And uh, I, I'm going to sort of stop now unless you have any more questions about that, because we have a lot of other things that <laughs> Rob and I would yeah. like to discuss with you guys to help the people that are watching your podcast. Let's do it. Yeah. And, and well, I guess really quick, let's talk about your guys' partnership, you and Rob, uh, really quick. And maybe Rob, if you want to uh, take the head on this. 
Rob, yeah. I could get I could give the short answer, or you could give the long answer. Oh, <laughs> maybe maybe the short is needed. Then <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it to you guys. <laughs> well, try, let, me, well, let me first tell the short answer, <laughs> okay? Because <laughs> um, several years back, I guess now, how many years back would it be, Rob? Five years, six years back? Yeah, okay, okay. yeah. Uh, I was looking to create my next book. Okay. And at that time, I was helping a little health issue at that time, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I needed somebody to help me to do that. So I reached out to Mike Keenix. You yeah. guys probably know Mike yep. Keenix. Very, very well. well. I, yeah. said, I said, Mike, I said, I, I'm thinking about creating a book. Who, who can I hire to help me with that, okay? And, of course, other people, I asked other people as well to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a lot of people. And one of them was talking to this guy, Rob Kueska, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so I listened to several people. And finally, I decided on Rob. And the reason why I chose Rob was because not only does he know how to help me to create a book, but he understands marketing. OK, mm -hmm. and that's so key. You have to really understand marketing as well. So that's why we got with Rob. Yeah. So, the, so now the story I tell about Rob is once I get him, I can't get him. I can't, <laughs> never get rid of him. OK, <laughs> and, and so, so we do a lot of things now in marketing. And from my perspective, it's good if you're ever going to work with anybody else in your business, you want to you want to get somebody who also understands marketing mm. in your business, okay? Because so many times people don't understand marketing and their business will go out of business, okay? So with that said, Rob, tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> uh, I don't know what else I can add to that. I mean, um, the reason I, I understood marketing bef was because before I was in the publishing world, I was a marketer. Mm -hmm. And um, I got into publishing kind of through Mike. Um, and uh, at one point, we were uh, I was running a business where we were helping people to, to, to build their entire platform. Was it the publish you know, profits the and something other? Because yeah. I, I helped them launch that a long time ago. Ah, yeah. right. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Full circle. Yeah, so I came up through that, and uh, we—I was running a business where we would build people's websites and help them create their first product and help them create their presentation mm. and write their signature talk and everything else. And the first thing I would say to people was, "Right, if you're going to go down this track, you need to write a book. Come back when you've written a book." <laughs> and they never came back because telling people that they need to do something is not the same as actually getting them to do it. Mm. So. Um, when we came over to Canada in 2014, I sat down and I thought, I hate most of my business. I don't like running teams of website developers. I don't like running people, running teams of presentation creators and things like that. I'm a glorified project manager here, and I built a, pre a business that I act actively hated. Mm. And um, I, I, I was over in San Diego uh, interviewing Mike for my podcast. And we kind of said, well, why not drop everything else? And instead of pe telling people to write their book, why not instead help them to create it? And um, that interview with Mike turned into presenting on Mike's stage and uh, a good lasting friendship. And then, of course, when Bill came along to Mike and said, who should I work with? I was the one that he recommended. Perfect. Which is uh, one of the, the big a proof of the big power of uh, building the right relationships. Yeah. No, yeah. that's that wasn't it wasn't done with a view to who can you introduce me to, but no. that's where it ended up. Well, that's the, that's how the best stuff I, I percolates and happens any anyway. And I know you guys have been busy last year. I think it was the first summit you guys put out, right? And a, what a couple of versions yeah. of the book now, which have stemmed from that. So that's probably part of the book yeah. model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, that we, well, we, we, we started off with a live event in 2018. Gotcha. Okay. And, uh, in 2019, um, uh, Bill, I think said, I don't want to run a live event. Can we do something else? And I said, well, why don't we do it online and do a virtual summit? Mm. Um, and ironically, uh, we then on the back of that created the Alliance and then realized we need to get people into live events. So back in March, we ran, I like to think of it as, I, I like to think it's not the last live event ever in the world. <laughs> literally on March the 17th, people were hanging on for the, for the close because they knew we were almost at the end and they didn't want to miss it. But they also knew that the airports were shutting down, borders were being closed and <laughs> right. Yep. They were so, just, so, Rob, so this is to Rob now. Rob, 
Yeah. We're about to tell people advice, okay? And here's the advice we're going to give it to Joe and Matt, okay? You guys have to understand in this business that you're creating, both of you have to understand marketing and enjoy working in your your marketing to grow a much bigger business in the future, okay? Which is basically what Rob and I have done, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. So it's really about not just knowing how to do this, to do that. It's really about learning how to be a marketer, okay? And so, because with that, said, with that said, you'll eventually build a much, much bigger business other than just doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No, that's the problem with most podcasters. They just stick here and that's it. There's marketing. You need to do yeah. all this other stuff to support it. Well, Bill, let's let's talk about the seven steps of outrageous marketing. Eight steps. Well, I know there's an eighth now, but I was going <laughs> to leave that to Bill. To you let present. the cat out of the bag. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> you got to edit that out. Well, here's the best way to do it. And first of all, I'll do a little clarity of the seven versus the eight. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But, but, uh, but when I first created my very first book, way back in the day, I think it was somewhere around 1963. No, I'm just mm. kidding. <laughs> way back. Okay is I created the, my very first book, which is uh, somewhere here, here, this book right here. That's okay. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's the best okay. headshot, by the way. I love this picture. Right, right. <laughs> right. Got to use it for the podcast. <laughs> so, so, um, so anyway, so at that time, when I did my very first book, I had seven steps, okay? And like any person who's a marketer, you're always looking for more ways, okay? So when Rob and I created the volume two of the book that Rob and I worked on together. Okay. We had another person that actually sent over a campaign for us. And when that happened was a funny story because first we were going to get, we were having a zoom with her. Okay. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, my computer wasn't working right. So I didn't, I couldn't have enough time to talk to her because she had to go somewhere else quickly. Yeah. And then Rob was nice enough to send me over all the information about her. Okay. And when I got it and she, I, she knows this now because she laughs about it. <laughs> Once I got it all, I couldn't fall asleep. I was up all night going wow. through all that stuff. Okay. Cause it was the very first time I ever saw things that were so much special about what we were doing. So we move that into the eighth step, okay? But let's just spend a few minutes right now to go through the eight steps. And at the end, we'll talk about the eighth one. So the step number one, and I actually put it over here, okay? (laughs) Then I'll go through it. Step number one is understand that everything you do to advertise and market your business can be outrageous, okay? And Rob, if you want to, you can jump in on that, that or else I can talk about that. It's up to you. Yeah, I, I, I can jump in. I, and I think, I guess we really need to talk about what outrageous means as well. Yeah. And a lot of people think that it, that it does mean you've got to dress up or you've got to do whatever it is. It really means being prepared to do what, what your competitors won't do and go where your competitors won't go. So in some industries, it does mean dressing up. And we had uh, a guy who was in our second book. He actually came to our f- first live event back in San Diego. And um, he came and he he created this campaign that ended up with him wearing Super Mario mm. around his legs. He'd got this half body suit, so it looked like he was gi- he was being given a piggyback by Super Mario. And he <laughs> just w- wandered around the ca- the the event hall wearing that. And he ended up in the elevator with Russell Brunson, yeah. who thought, "Who is this nutter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need to get out of here. I don't think I'm safe. But, um, <laughs> so that's kind of one extreme. Uh, and the other extreme, I mean, I used to be a CPA uh-huh. where you were expected to wear somber suits, plain ties. colored ties, <laughs> yeah. and solid colored shirts. And so outrageous in that world was I used to wear brightly colored shirts with, with patterns on. And I'd wear a patent shirt with a with a striped tie or a striped shirt with a patent tie. And Bill is in hysterics because he knows a tailor would tell you never do that. But <laughs> it meant that I, w- I got recognized. And then other people started copying that. So I ditched the ties. Mm-hmm. And then I became, I remember walking into one meeting and, and somebody said, you know, I've just realized I've known you for three years and I've never seen you wear a tie. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> and that ended, and then I, I ended up, um, I was in another. Robert, you told me that, it, Robert, you're telling me that if you, I didn't know you were a CPA. Yeah. If I would have known that, I never would have used you. To- <laughs> <laughs> no marketing level. Can, uh- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I became known as the least accountant like accountant anybody ever met. <laughs> that's awesome yeah. uh, by, the, by the way one of the things right now and I'm going to get into step number two in a second yeah. but one of the things is that's and we're going to talk about it is one of the steps but one of the things that really helped to run a business is to have some fun by mm-hmm. the way absolutely yeah. you know, you know that's, so. that's really the core of everything we do even on this podcast and that's that's usually the end result we want to leave people with because it's a good experience and that's just it's a good feeling that kind of hits you you know Right, right. Yeah. Um, so step number two is understand that you are not your customer. Mm. You are not your customer, okay? Because with our people, we tell them that they everything they do should be outrageous, okay? Even their customers, okay? They're you know they have to think about that. Is they're not they're not a customer. They're with somebody that own a, a business, okay? So you got to make sure mm. that that's outrageous works for that. Rob, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, now that you're a CPA, you can tell me more about that. Yeah. Do you trust him more now or no? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I the, the mistake a lot of marketers make is they 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 reject marketing because they think I wouldn't respond to that. And it doesn't matter whether you would respond to the marketing or not. It's whether the people you're talking to would. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a member of our mastermind, um, Ken Hardison. And at one point he was running a, a, a personal injury law, law firm. And if he had put out marketing that was written in the kind of language that that lawyers would respond to, most of the people he was trying to sell to wouldn't even be able to understand it, let alone respond to it. So he had to write stuff that was talking to them in the world that they live in and talk about the issues they understand and in a language that they understand. He couldn't write it like a legal document. But most lawyers would have looked at it and said, well, this this isn't highbrow enough for me. But, you know, he built a multi-million dollar law firm out of it. Hmm. uh, And he now teaches other lawyers how to do the same thing um, just by writing writing marketing campaigns to the person he's actually targeting and not to himself. Hmm. And and that really, because it's interesting because these are a lot of fundamentals, like really knowing your customer and avatar and whatnot. And this is exactly what we're doing right now for our podcast and our business. Because you know, like it's just evolved over the years, so I'm sure even with this, the marketing step number two, you know, it's you got to remember, hey, it, you can enjoy what you're doing or put out something you think you want into the world, but you better understand that customer that's going to give you money, right? Because they're right, they're what right. they're, they're carrying you forward. Yeah. And the first time I met Ken, uh-huh. uh huh, actually he was a member of me at Glazer Kennedy, and that's where he first realizing to himself that he to build that much bigger business. He has to build a larger business, okay? So, uh, so my point is, how, 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 whatever, how, wherever you're at, and how, how how old you are, okay? You always think of ways to make things look outrageous, mm. so that more people will buy from you on an ongoing basis. Now let's go to step number three, which is one of my fa- fa- one of the one I really like, mm. and the reason why I really like it because I created it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, train your brain to look for ideas in obvious places. Okay, mm. so there's a lot of times you should always be looking around what's going on. Okay, and then once you see that, you say to yourself, "Gee, this is a really smart thing we should be doing in our business." So you're looking for obvious places. Now, of course. My my old CPA here, Rob, he could actually <laughs> tell you more about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it it can sometimes be as simple as looking at the campaign you're already running and thinking, what can we tweak to make it better? So um, quite often, split testing is a really easy way to improve a campaign, and people don't uh, don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, earlier on today, I was talking to one to one of our clients, and. He was saying, you know, I'm creating a, uh, a webinar. Do you think I should run it live or should I automate it? And I said, well, why don't you do, uh, and I'll give Russell Brunson full credit for this because it's his, it's him that I heard this from, is Russell runs the, the webinar as many times as possible until he knows it's working as well as it can be. And then he automates that. 
And you know, it's the same thing with or with all of our campaigns. You know, do different versions of the sales letter and see which one works better. Do record a few versions of the video, try it, record a new version, see what works better, try it again, and um, and just keep tweaking everything. And that's just an obvious place that most people forget to to look even. Yeah. And that goes to like the emails. I know like we're, we automate a bunch of our emails and sequences, but why would you want to sequence or automate stuff before you test what the email is to actually function <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. The right. Yeah. And, and just a little more clarity before we'll get to step number four about this is because when Rob and I put together these two books, okay, okay, this is what when we sent the people to send over the information so we can turn it into campaigns in, in the book, okay, we looked at all the information they did, but at the end, we asked them the results that their campaign creates, okay? Because nobody wants to see a campaign if it's not getting good results, okay? So we they had to tell us the results that they were getting because we didn't want anybody to see a campaign in our book that it's, that it's, it's horrible, okay? Sure. So one of the things we asked for is the results, okay? Um, so let's move on to step number three is train your brain to look for ideas in unobvious places, okay? Yeah, this is step now, number four, will, right? Yeah. This is this yeah. is step yeah. number four. And I will tell you, before Rob gives you a couple of information about it, one thing I will tell you, the best way I used to do it, and I still do it, okay, when I when my bride and I go away, okay, mm -hmm. and we go to all kinds of countries and stuff like that, and you can all see un, un, unusual things when you when you <laughs> way and and the thing i always do i take a picture right then and there and i start taking <laughs> pictures and i figure out how to use that in my own business but with that said my old cpa here will <laughs> tell you about some of the other <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning to regret i there's a reason i haven't told you in five years that I used to <laughs> oh wow five years <laughs> uh, i'd love that I got a new nickname now the old cpa <laughs> uh. Matt, Matt, you weren't a CPA, were you, Matt? I was never a CPA, but no. you did. Uh, thank God. Uh, thank God. <laughs> finance, <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is how you create campaigns that that your competitors won't even think about, hmm. is looking at, what, looking at what's going on in the world and just noticing different stuff. Um, we, uh, I mentioned before that uh, one of our mastermind members, we, at our mastermind meetings, we have a session that we call What's Working Now. Mm -hmm. And at uh, one of those sessions earlier this year, I walked through a campaign that was being run by a company that sells uh, music libraries to, to media companies. So they'll sell music libraries to, uh, to TV stations and things like that. License None about of our members about. are in that industry. But just the way that this company had laid out their whole campaign with, I mean, there was a, there was a wonderful offer at the start of it, um, which was you can, have it you can have it free later or buy now. And so they were, they were kind of selling a low entry um, uh, tripwire type product, mm -hmm. but they were relying on the fact that some people, yeah, they'll take the free offer and they'll wait a couple of weeks. And some people will just go, you know what? I need to buy it right now. And they and the, the campaign in their industry was so different that for about three months, nobody could talk about anything else. And so I just basically presented this campaign to the mastermind members and said, look, here it is step by step. This is what they're doing. And as it was full of little nuggets that they'd never have thought of and their campaign, their competitors would, wouldn't have seen any, any of it either. Mm. And so it's as simple as just looking around you and saying, what are people doing that, that I wouldn't normally pay attention to? And like Bill said, going on vacation and sending stuff back from vacation and you, know, you see something unusual that most people won't have seen. You take a photograph and you uh, maybe shoot a video there and things like that. Yeah, no, it's a perfect example is just take pictures of new perspectives, new ways of looking at things. And yeah, traveling is the easiest way to do that. Mm. Or if you can't travel right now, maybe go on Google Maps or something and start <laughs> street view, you know, start walking around. Cool. You're right. You could go online and get anything you need to get online. There you go. Okay. Um, let's, so let's go to step number five, okay? okay. And and I'll tell you about that, and I'll tell you who created it. Okay? <laughs> so step number five is study what's working outside your industry 
and ascendiate. Uh-huh. Ascendiate. Swipe and deploy it. Okay. Now I'll tell you where it started. Okay. It started when I was in the menswear business and I was going to Dan's um, mastermind groups. Okay. And everybody that was a member there w- were in different categories. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And one day when I was at that meeting, I walked over to what I was sent out for my menswear business, okay? And I call it S&D, it, swipe and deploy it, because people could see what I do and they could use it in their own industry. And everybody, nobody else was in the menswear business in Dan's mastermind group, okay? Because there's only one person stupid enough to get in that. <laughs> and then that was me, but no, I'm like, I'm just kidding. And so a lot of people that were in the mastermind group, they started stealing what I was doing it and then in their category. So that's a really way, good way to actually do in your own business. So I know Rob, and I'm not even going to call you a CPA anymore. I'll just call you a Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Let it linger for a you, second. He knows. <laughs> why don't you, because there's because there's a guy, there's a great guy in our mastermind group who S and D's. You know, and if you want to, you could talk about him. Um, you don't have to. You don't do. <laughs> are, are you thinking of Rafael there? Yeah, Rafael. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I mean, the whole idea is taking things that are working somewhere else and applying them. And um, there's a there's a great idea that if you're if you've been in the world in GKI of GKIC for any time, you'll remember uh, the idea of the shock and awe box. Uh-huh. Um, and Raphael is in the software industry, um, and the big problem with software, and it's the same with services as well, is there's nothing for people to hold, particularly these days where software is delivered as a download and you're not getting a CD in a box anymore. Right. And, um, and so the, the challenge you have is how do you make something so intangible? How do you turn it into something people can hold and they can show to other people and they can say, look, this is what I've got and so on. And so he took the idea of the, um, the, the shock and awe pack and just put it together. And so, um, he'll, he's, he's built this entire, uh, funnel where he'll know exactly how far someone has watched in his introductory webinar. And more to the point, he's done it so many times now that he knows based on how far they've watched, how likely they are to buy at the end of it. Yep. Makes sense. So based on how far they get, he'll do different levels of follow-up, including if they get to a particular point, he's got his team waiting by the phone to to actually pick up the phone and call that person while they're watching. Oh, wow. wow. That's, that, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say if they're like, hey, 80% I, in or something, you know, in the Q and a section, yeah. it's like, just call them up. <laughs> Cause by the time they've got there, he knows they're going to buy. Well, get the salesperson on the phone to them. Hmm. But, um, but one of the big things he does is he'll send out a, a shock and awe pack that has um, some copies of his book. It's got uh, a pack of materials and he's actually selling to boards. So he needs to send material that they can distribute to the other members. And of course, it's much better to put it in a box and have something they can hand to the other members of the board rather than having an email that they forward or anything like that. And the beauty and of the shock all- and awe box is basically you open it up yeah. and then you have all these goodies, books. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah, like yeah. Hen- Henry. Who sent the- you that? What are, what, yeah, what's that about? <laughs> yeah, everyone wants it. It's a gift. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. And, and and Bill, you actually re- uh, rec- uh you, you, you made me remember, geez, I can't speak right now. Um, the masterminds we were in, we were the only digital marketers mm-hmm. in the, the GKIC masterminds locally. And it was, it was interesting because, yeah, we had an auto uh, repair guy. We had a guy doing direct mail, handwritten stuff in the real estate space. And mm-hmm. we were kind of like, this is interesting, but I like it because we were able to, well, a lot of folks were interested in digital marketing because they had no clue. So we were kind of those young, young Well, dudes. we were so immersed in digital marketing that the advice we were getting was sort of becoming incestuous, right? We were hearing the same stuff over and over again. But when you sit in a mastermind with a mechanic and a direct mail guy and a uh, uh, like a physician and a, mm-hmm. a CPA and a lawyer and like all these different industries, right? We started really starting to think outside the box with our business because we'd heard so much of the same stuff in the digital marketing world. I think it helped right. us. Yeah, get it, get further quicker. Right. Which is, which is, you know, listen. So as you mentioned early on, okay, that we had, uh, we had a lot of different gr- um, groups that we mm-hmm. had. Well, Glazer, we were at to 100 people, different groups, okay, all throughout the 
both Maryland and also Canada. Okay. Mm. And one of the biggest purposes we we were to to create that thing was it doesn't matter what category people were in, they could actually learn how to do things together and use it in their own business. And a lot of people built huge businesses because of that kind of thing. Okay. So let's go to the next one here because I don't know how much time we have. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I think next number, oh, step number six is everything can be outrageous, including you. Okay. So when you show this book that was here, (laughs) I was outrageous on there. Okay. And people would remember that and always think about it. Because let's say if you were going to a place that that sells books, okay, and you walk in and these are up there, (laughs) you're going to pick that up and say, what is this crazy person? But let me find out more about it. Okay. So that's the reason why we did this whole thing of step number six, everything can be outrageous, including you, okay? So even as right now, when I'm looking at Matt and Joe, they're outrageous looking at them right now, okay? <laughs> what, the pink <laughs> microphone? Yeah, <it's- laughs> <laughs> the fact that we're in the same room together right now. <laughs> That's outrageous yeah. in the current That's world. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not six feet apart either. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's all an illusion right. on camera. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Yeah, see, like with Rob and I, you know, we're in another country. <laughs> You're really yeah. distanced. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Rob, what do you what do you what do you got on the uh, the outrageous? What side I got of on things? the I mean, earlier on, I said it's that outrageous doesn't have to be about dressing outrageously or acting yeah. outrageously, but it can be. Um, and a lot of the time, people say, "Oh, yeah, but that's not professional," or "That's not me." And the answer to that is, well, it doesn't matter. It's are your customers going to notice it and are they going to respond to it? And it's not about whether you like it or not. It's about um, what your customers like. Mm. Um, and I always look at you know the perfect outrageous marketer from this point of view is Richard Branson, the uh, mm. founder of Virgin Group. You know, when he launched Virgin Cola in the US, he rented a tank mm. and drove it through a New York Times Square over Coke cans. You know, he be- he got paid his team to line <laughs> Times Square with cans of Coke, and then he just drove this tank over it. Um, and then when he was launching Virgin Atlantic and flying from London to New York, um, British Airways, the, the national uh, airline, accused him of being, accused them of being pirates. Mm. And so he literally dressed his check-in team in pirate costume. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and then he got got on the plane dressed as a pirate as well. Um, and then on another flight, he dressed up as the pilot and he made people think that he was going to be the one flying them all the way to New York. <laughs> so it's, you know, you don't have to dre- dress up as a pirate and you don't have to rent a tank, <laughs> but you are part of your brand and you can make it outrageous just by what you do. Uh, it, the event I was talking about in Dallas back in March, mm. um, we chose a pirate theme because we were supporting a charity that's called Pirate. And so, you know, we actually did our presentations dressed as pirates. Uh, and and the whole event was themed around it. And it's it's just part of that having fun that Bill was mentioning as well. Doesn't it make it easier too? Like if you're having fun in your business and you know, like like Rob, you wear it like without a tie, I'm sure it felt like less of a noose around your neck. <laughs> you know, <it's> like <laughs> oh, upside yes. down, you know. That's how I always see ties. <laughs> but but yeah. yeah, I mean it could just be enough to like shake you, you know, make you almost feel like you oh, I'm risking things a little bit. You know, and people get attracted to that. Yeah. It also kind of goes back to steps three and four, where you can kind of look at various things in your industry where you're like, everybody's been doing this in a boring way for a a long time. How can I, how can I spice this up a little? How can I add some pizzazz? Right. Uh (laughs) I mean, at one stage I found, uh, I found a coat. Uh, an overcoat that would, uh, I know you live in San Diego, so uh, you probably don't know what an overcoat is, but, <laughs> it, coat time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually found out like a cloak as I walked. <laughs> so I started wearing this to meetings and I would walk into a meeting and it was like, you know, it's like Batman had just appeared because this cloak, this coat was fanned out behind me and I'd sweep in. <laughs> <laughs> you and like, like you see, people remember it. They do. <laughs> Yeah, it makes me think of Neo in the Matrix as he walks around. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, everyone can do it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be appearance. It could be the way you speak. Uh, you know, like for I feel like we do that, or at least we've tried to do it for a long time in our podcast, is break the mold of a business show. We go a little deeper. We have a fun conversation. We're not, you know, a set line of questioning. I mean, there's there's different things that we try to apply in just this form of marketing alone. 
right. Yeah. You're right. Well, let's let's well, move on well, to we have, yeah. Go ahead. Well, we have two more steps. Okay. Okay. Yep. And and we'll do step number seven real fast because I want to leave more time for step number eight. But we sure, will perfect. do step, okay because we already talked about it. Step number seven is outrageous advertising is fun mm -hmm. and it lets you make your business fun too. Okay. Because again, as we've talked already, okay, when you have a business, you know, you don't always feel bad. You, things are terrible like that. You want to do something where there's some fun where you think back and yourself, gee, this is so great, you know, and not, and not only for you, but your employees as well. You know what I mean? That things would be fun for them because, you know, when I had Glazer Kennedy back in the day, okay, mm -hmm. we had 30 employees, okay? And nobody wanted to get out, okay? They liked what we were doing. We liked how we were helping people like, like that. And so, and and also when we would have our events and things like that, we would always have fun. Okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so that's a key piece of this thing of, of the eight steps is one of them is you have to have fun. You really have to have fun. I mean, I know Joe Polish. Do you want to talk about Joe real fast or you want to go into step number eight, Rob? Um, I was actually going to talk about Russell uh, since, because he used to be one of your mastermind members as well. And, you know, Russell Brunson, his campaigns are always incredibly fun. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole point is when you make your campaigns fun, people always want the next step. It's not, oh no, here's another sales letter from this guy. It's, oh gosh, I wonder what this person's going to do next. What's this video going to be about? What's yep. the postcard going to have? What's this box that's just arrived? And it just keeps people actually wanting to receive your, mar your marketing rather than dreading the arrival of yet another sales letter or sales email um, or another tacky video or whatever. It's a good point. Nice. And even on Russell, when we had him on the podcast, he was uh, putting his, his traffic book out there and he had all these yeah. beautiful videos done and yeah, it just sucked me in. I was like, okay, I know it's a sales video. I know what he's doing. I've already chatted with him, <laughs> but I still want to watch. <laughs> like, this is I mean, good. I mean, yeah. Russell will dress, dress up as Batman quite sure. happily uh, to, for right. events and things. Yeah. And, um, and just to walk around and, his house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. He, th he thought that he thought our guy was nuts for wearing Super Mario, but he thinks nothing of dressing up as Batman. <laughs> he lives in it. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. it's confirmed. And we had, we had Yannick Silva was in the second book as well. And, mm -hmm. um, he ran a, uh, a he ran an event that was themed around um, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, ah, yeah. So he dressed up as the caterpillar, uh. <laughs> and he greeted as people walked in. He was there with his hookah, and he even put on his best caterpillar voice. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. Well, even <laughs> his old uh, kind of book, but <laughs> even his old underground events were all like sort of James Bond, Mission Impossible, yeah. right. suited up events. Uh, yeah, I mean, he he was. Yeah. He was always really into to sort of the playing with it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah, going to make right. people want to come back for the next event. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, even there was even this old guy that spoke at twice this event. Who okay. Was that? <laughs> I don't even know him, but it's an old guy. Okay. Yeah. And, he, <laughs> and <laughs> um, but anyway, so that is step number seven. Okay. Okay. And we could be talking about step number step for about two days. Yeah. yeah. But let, let's, let, let's, let me turn. I'm sorry. I apologize. Let me turn this off. Come on. Bill. All right. Oh, Bill. <laughs> I, listen, I turned it on. I turned it on. Just to make sure it was outrageous. Okay. Yeah. okay. Nailed it. Yeah. Okay. Achieved. <laughs> but let's talk about step number eight because step number eight, there's a lot of actually the campaigns are in the book could apply to this. Okay. But there was one particular one that really did apply to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although there were several of these campaigns in there where it actually would apply to it. So step number eight is every outrageous campaign should create an, an emotional reaction in order to deliver an experience okay mm. and that was a key word to create an experience okay and um and now i'm going to let the old cpa guy to actually <laughs> explain this because his name is marisa margatrot okay yeah. so go ahead rob <laughs> You're yeah up. so um we we brought in marisa margatrot for the second book and her whole thing is about experience marketing hmm. Um, and really, the, the it's simple. Most marketing for decades has been about pushing information at the consumer and telling them what they need, telling them what's good for them, and telling them what to think, and telling them when to buy and everything else. And we need to turn it into a into something much more engaging, into something that's much more experiential and much more two way. 
And so anytime that we can create a, an experience for people in our marketing, it's going to skyrocket one actual sales and two retention. Mm. And so, um, you know, Bill said a lot of the campaigns in the book and, uh, and actually, if we look back at the first book, there was, a lot of those were about experiences as well. But you mentioned Joe Polish before. Um, Joe Polish's campaign was all about uh, finding true love and using his marketing for dating. And um, really what he did was he created a sales editor that was about that took people on an emotional journey as they read it and got them ready for, is this the person that I want to meet uh, for a date? Um, Nick James, who was the guy with Super Mario, mm -hmm. his campaign was based around the idea that his wife had hired a, per a private detective because she thought he was having an affair. <laughs> and so the, the, the people are being sent the private detective's report. They're being sent <laughs> photographs through the mail. And of course, at the end, it turns out that he's having an affair with Super Mario. And that's where the... <laughs> <laughs> that's, why <he's>, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Well thought and, out. You know, and Yannick's, uh, Yannick's camps and events were all about creating experiences. Right, right. And so, yeah, um, that was why when we created the Alliance, it wasn't just about log in and watch this week's training or this month's training. It was log in, speak to us, ask questions, send us your campaigns, get feedback and get that, the, uh, get that conversation going. And then, mm. you know, twice a year we gather in person. Um, which is why this year, you know, obviously we can't gather for the second time, which is why we're running a live event in November. Mm. That's, I mean, the, the experience I think is so important and that's where, you know, just a, an example, I guess that what we do here is the podcast is connected to other pieces where we allow folks to kind of select their own journey and we have a lot of different paths for them, different books, different topics and things that, yeah. you know, if they raise their hand, cool. Well, we're going to, you know, segment them of course in our list, but we're going to also cater that message to whatever's relevant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. that's i love the eighth so, step and yeah where yeah. does that take us now bill well then it's going to take us to step number nine it's somewhere in life you know <laughs> <laughs> not, like we have a ninth we're not, we're not, <laughs> no, we're not, not yet. there yet we're not there, but the but the point about that is we had originally i had seven steps and now we have eight steps and the the, the thing about that is you're always looking for the next step OK, OK. And you always have to have your eyes open, looking for things, listening to things like that. And eventually you'll hear some new things that actually you'll say it will be the next step. And again, the whole thing that's part of this whole thing, it's about marketing. Mm. It really is about marketing. There were so many media that we've used in, in these two books. OK. And actually, at the end of the book, you can see all the media that's on there. OK. And so that's really about what this business really is. And the other thing I would say about this, and then, I, and then at some point I'd like to tell you about some, not my book, but some other books that I watch. Okay? Yeah. Uh, but, but I also will say that you always have to be looking for additional things that number one. Okay. And then the other thing I would like to just mention my good friend, Zig Ziglar. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately I lost him. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but, but he actually, when I owned Glazer Kennedy, he spoke at three of my events. Oh, for, for me, okay. And but the very first thing when I was at that first event that I didn't even I, well, from a distance, okay, because mm -hmm. I wasn't running that event, okay. And he was teaching people about this one thing, which I actually put in my hand. There, there are five reasons that people don't buy, okay. And I won't tell you the all of this, all the all the five steps, but I'll tell you the last step, okay, because that's the biggest one, which is no trust. See, the biggest is no trust. So people don't want to buy from you because they don't trust you, okay? So one of the things I would tell everybody, okay, and I, and definitely have, it applies to our business now, is we want to always have people to be able to buy something from us because they trust us. Because if they trust you, they want to get more, okay? Okay? Because after they might buy the first thing, they want to buy the next thing, they buy the next thing. And the reason why is because they trust you, okay? And that's so important. That's always been very important to me, even when I own a menswear business, okay? When I sell them suits, I want to make sure that they were happy with their suits, you know, and things like that. And they want to come back and get more suits, okay? And that makes it so much easier to get people to buy, okay? Mm -hmm. So even if you're creating this podcast, you have to make sure people trust you, okay? That's right. That's, that is so important. Um, but I will mention a couple books that I really suggest people uh, should be thinking about, okay? Thank you. And then, 
then, and then Rob, since Rob is really a big book guy, okay, and maybe <laughs> he'll mention a couple of, but one of them is one of the guys in my mastermind group before is Matt Basak. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't got his new book yet, you definitely want to get this book. It's my marketing side sidekick, okay? Because the, he creates so many emails, so many emails. He actually put it all together to show the best way he created emails for people, okay? Mm. So you definitely want to get that book, okay? The second one is, actually, I spoke for Brian Kurtz, okay? Uh -huh. um, um, has Brian ever on this podcast? Pretty he has, has been, yeah. yeah. Brian's an well, awesome guy, yeah. As he should be, okay? Mm -hmm. And he so when I asked me to speak for him, he mailed me over his book. Of course, I mailed him back my book, okay? <laughs> and this is one of the best books I've seen in years, okay? Yep. The one thing I really like about, well, that's a lot, but one thing I, I'll mention is when you go through his book, one of the things he tells people is with the people, because basically he builds together ma mastermind members, okay? Yep. And the big thing about it is he makes sure to help them but to, to tell them how to do it online and offline. That's a key piece to that. And that's the reason why this is such a great book because of that. He doesn't just do it offline, not just online, a combination of both. And just for um, audio audio folks, that's Over Delivers, the name of that book from Brian Kurtz. Yeah, right. it's, it's a great right. book. Yeah. It is great. Okay. I, I, by the way, I didn't read this book. I read it <laughs> once. No, I read it okay. yeah, right. Well, and also, it so get, also get the book uh, or get on email his email list. I think he sends like his best chapters in like once a week. I mean, it's yes. almost like a mini book in mm -hmm. a new version of Over Deliver. It's really worth right. it. Right, right, right. Um, no, he's. I mean, he's terrific. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Yannick has Yannick Silver has read a couple books. Okay, I'm not going to mention his most recent one. Okay, because the only one you could ever find out about his newest one is you have to go to the virtual event, but, okay, but the book before that is Evolve Enterprise, okay? This is from Yannick Silver, okay. a really great book, okay? Now, this one, I didn't read it twice. I only read it once, ah. but it was still <laughs> a great book. Okay? Yeah. And then the last one, and the reason why I'd say this one is because you always have to think about who were the ones that taught you a lot in the beginning and helped it so much. Okay. And you probably nobody has ever heard of this guy. Okay. But it's one of the best books in there. Okay. Uh, that he's sent to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this was from Vincent Serpoli. And people probably never heard of this name, Vincent Serpoli. Okay. Oh. But Vincent Serpoli is a guy when I first was in the menswear business. And then even after I owned Glazer Kennedy, I used to have, I would bring Vince over to teach our attend, attend people to, 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 to be able to help people better in the book, okay, for the actual business, okay? And this is called Have You Forgotten, okay? It's a great book from Vincent Zerpoli, okay? And I, by the way, I just called him last week, okay? Yeah. Okay, just to stay in touch with him. And he's 92 years old now, okay? Wow, wow. And, and he's still as sharp as you can imagine, okay? Oh, cool. <laughs> so, so there's a couple of books, because normally there's so many books out there you should be looking at, okay? I mean, a lot of times I try to read, re read a book about once a week, okay? So wow. I'm always looking for more books all the time, but you're always looking for new things for your business. Now, Absolutely. with that said, okay, the the CPA guy. <laughs> the smart guy. <laughs> Thanks it's for being prepared, by the way, yeah. for all these books. <laughs> what you got, Rob? Uh, well, the, the problem with asking a publisher to name their favorite books <laughs> is... <laughs> so I, I narrowed it down to two. And they're kind of tangential to, to marketing, but um, the, the way I got from accounting into marketing was via the world of influencing and persuasion. And I started to look at, you know, what makes people tick? What makes people make good decisions? What makes them make dumb decisions? And one of my favorite books around that is there's a guy called Dan Ariely mm -hmm. who calls himself a behavioral economist. And he looks at, you know, why do people make decisions that they do? Um, one of his books is Predictably Irrational. Yep. And it's just a fantastic insight into the way people's brains work when you put when you give them information and how they then process that and reach a reach a decision. 
And if you understand the way people's brains work, then you can tap into that in your marketing and just make all your campaigns fit that decision-making process. Um, the second book I would uh, recommend is um, is called Influence by Robert Cialdini. Mm. Solid. Yeah, and I, I, I would be surprised if anybody who's in marketing hasn't read that. But if you haven't, then I'll, I'm going to use one of Bill's favorite uh, phrases. If you haven't read that book, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Call it as it is. Because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it just breaks down uh, everything into six simple principles that you need to apply in your uh, in your marketing. Hmm. And when I started teaching marketing, uh, I'll, you know, eighty percent of what I was teaching was just Robert Cialdini's principles, mm -hmm. dressed up in other clothes and dressed up to to make them more about marketing and less about persuasion. And then the final one, uh, and the, I didn't hold up the other two because they're ebooks, but the final one is a book called Flipnosis. Flipnosis, okay. The Art of okay. Split Second Persuasion. And that is, you know, and that again, it's another persuasion book, but it's about how do you make people make decisions quickly. Mm. And in marketing and sales, that is an, an indispensable skill because most of the time, the reason we don't make the sale is because we allow people to take too long to reach a decision. And so if you can teach them how to make that decision quickly, then you can close the first <laughs> sale. And the first sale is always the hardest. And after that, it becomes so much easier. Yeah. So those are my three recommendations. You guys are amazing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unprompted, and yet all these recommendations so great. Uh, Matt, let's let's close it off at the uh, virtual summit because I want to yeah. I want to leave some. I know we're like right at the end, but we didn't even get to talk about the summit. So oh, we didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to make sure you get some love there, and and we send people that direction. So give us yes. the overview there, and mm -hmm. and we'll tee people off for that. So uh, uh, you want make you want make it start, Rob, or? You I, either way. <laughs> well, I'll get started and I'll let you continue. How's that sound? Okay. Sure. Because, you know, you always will put the CPA at the end anyway. Yeah. So my my point, again, I never knew you were CPA. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean. There's a reason I keep it a secret. <laughs> right. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> um, the, um, when we were talking about creating this virtual event, okay, um, and we, we also know, number one, we had to do it virtually, not live, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, the next, when we can, we will do our next events live, but we can't now. But we thought about how do we make it so powerful in order to help people to actually get online to be for this event, okay? And the reason why we looked at the people that we said would allow them to present, okay, is every one of their businesses are still doing great in spite of COVID-19, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That was a key thing for this whole thing. So we actually are going to have around 25 presenters, which also includes one of them is from Rob, the CPA guy, mm -hmm. and one from this menswear guy, and also <laughs> my daughter, Mara, who's pretty much in charge of everything anyway, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and we, so we'll create, but, but all with all of us, okay, we're going to be teaching people how it, it will work in your business regardless of what you're doing and also in spite of COVID-19, okay? But we also have some other really great presenters that would be there as well. I mean, um, I don't know if you ever met this guy named Ryan Dice. Oh, okay. yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's been around. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan is doing a great presentation, okay? Because with him, if he says no, I'll kill him. Okay, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'll send him this episode or that clip. <laughs> you, you can, okay. He was in my master mastermind group for eight years wow. using my mastermind yeah. bravery russell brunson was in my mastermind group for six years okay but anyway going and by the way one key about that which i want to mention that because i mentioned a couple guys in my mastermind group one of the smartest ways to grow a business for yourself is to be a member of a mastermind group mm -hmm. okay okay um so i mean that's one thing you should always think about okay that in, in doing okay because over the years i saw so many people decided to get into a mastermind group and they were the ones that really grew the biggest business. Rob, give a couple more examples of this. Yeah. Um, somebody else you might have heard of, uh, Dean Jackson mm -hmm. is going to be, is awesome. going to be talking about referrals. Uh, we've got Rachel Peterson coming in. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Mike Koenigs is presenting. The, so, the crazy uh, di Bruce dinosaur marketer himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the disruptosaurus That's himself. Right. Yep. 
Uh, Ed Rush, who you mentioned, is going to be on there. And Marisa Murgatroyd, who kickstarted that whole eighth step, we've got her back. Um, and she's talking about, um, uh, she's talking about, she had a sales process that delivers multi million dollars every time. Wow. And um, a lot of people would be scared to even tweak that. She actually abandoned the whole process and created a new one to deal with the whole COVID-19 situation. Uh, okay. So, yeah, like Bell said, we, we've only invited people whose businesses are doing as well or better during COVID-19. Uh, and really, you know, it's not about COVID-19. It's about what do you do when things don't go your way? Um, I mean, Bill and I both, I mean, I, I started my business um, a few years before the 2008 collapse. So oh. I've al- I'd already been through one business, one, one world meltdown. Mm-hmm. And so this time around, it's kind of like, okay, so this is happening again. What did I do last time and how do, it, how do we adjust? Um, and I think that's what's caught a lot of people off is people have forgotten that these things do keep happening. Yeah, and we just need to learn the right principles. And so, yeah, we brought together the this panel of effectively the most successful marketers we know right now, who have pivoted, changed what they're doing, adjusted, and are making their businesses bigger and better. Awesome. Well, I know this is uh, what it's happening. What November sixteenth through the eighteenth. Correct. Yes. Right, Perfect. Right. Yeah. So that should right. be before this goes live, of course. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, go. Exactly. Um, what what link do we want to use? Oh, we oh are we gonna... making a link? Um, we can do hustleandflowchart.com slash outrageous. Outrageous That'll... should work. Yeah. Should work. As long as people can spell it, which I'm sure they can because yeah. they found you before. <laughs> and we will link it up on the episode notes as well. So yeah. go to yes. the episode if you don't know how to spell outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> hustleandflowchart.com slash outrageous will get you there to the registration page. And uh, yeah, that's going to be fun because it's a it's an honor to get that collective mind share in one spot. Virtually, yes, but still, it's it's amazing, and the fact that you can access their brains and swipe. Like, well, and actually, one of the things like we both that Bill and I both forgot to mention is each of the speakers will be staying on after they've presented to answer questions live. Nice. Oh, that's something you can't even get at a live event. Yeah, uh, is the live. Q and A with each of, with every one of those speakers. And can people still get a copy of this this volume two book somewhere too? Because this book is really amazing. I mean, it's like an encyclopedia. You can yeah. just flip to any page and get a new idea for your business. <laughs> well, I mean, if somebody wants to buy one, okay, we can get, we could put together for as many as ten thousand for you. Okay, okay. You, that, okay. You could, that you could purchase them. <laughs> Such a generous <laughs> <game>. <laughs> right. We could but do. I would like to make one last comment. Uh-huh. Please. Again. Okay, um, is that actually I want to thank Joe and Matt. Okay, okay, thank because you. what you're putting together now is very helpful to people. Okay, so I want to say congratulations to you two guys. Okay, it's really good that you're creating this and you're looking for people to be on your podcast. And every one of them, you oh, figure yeah. out what they're talking about and teaching about, and on and on and on. So it's good that you're putting this together. And I do like the fact when you when you ask your questions, at some point you're laughing. Yeah. Which is so, important. so you're one of the eight steps that's happening in your business. Right now. Oh, we appreciate that so much. Thank you. That means so much coming from you. We Thanks a lot. You've helped us along the way. So yeah, all the grateful, yeah, gratitude's right back at both of you guys. So I can't wait to go, uh, go to your, uh, your guys' events and hopefully one in person <laughs> in the near yeah. future. Yeah. So um, yeah. Well, thank we look you. forward to seeing you there. We'll be there. <laughs> all right, and, guys. And- I'll make sure we send you a link. So if anybody does want to buy a copy of the uh, a second volume of Outrageous Campaigns, we'll send you a link that you can put in the show notes. Perfect. Thank as you. Well, so people can pick it up. All, All right. Cool. Well, Rob, hey. Bill, you guys, uh, it's been a pleasure and I uh, hope to chat again soon. Thank you. It's been fun. We'll speak to you soon. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for listening to that episode. This is Joe Fear. I'm sure you probably already knew that, and Matt is not here right now, but I'm pretty sure he enjoyed the episode just as much as you and I did, because, you know, he went into the production of kind of making that thing right along with me. So, thank you very much, and I want to give a quick shout out to our buddies over at Easy Webinar. These guys have been supporting us for a while, a long time, and Casey Zeman is just a super good guy all around. He's actually been on the show before. He's the founder of uh, easy webinar. So if you look up Casey Zeman on any podcast platform you're listening to, 
uh, go check him out. Go check out his backstory, what he's all about. You can learn a lot about webinars as well. And right now, you know, easy webinar. These guys are actually hooking you up with a great trial. It's a completely free trial to test out their software, soup to nuts, check it all out and see if it's a good fit for you. If you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, that's H-U-S-T-L-E. If you didn't know how to spell hustle, there you go. So if you go to easywebinar.com slash hustle, you can go grab a free trial. And Easy Webinar literally lives up to its name. It's super simple. I mean, super easy. And it does all the stuff that you're looking for in any kind of thing with webinars. I mean, they literally cover every single type of webinar you possibly can do. So from live to automated to scheduled at specific times and all these crazy features in between. Can't even list them all out. I'll be here way too long. They give you a ton of advanced analytics what's working, what's not during your webinar based off all these actions. You'll see who attended, how long they stayed, if they clicked the offer or if they didn't. Basically, you're gonna make more money and you're gonna work less with this thing and you're gonna create better relationships with the folks that are listening because it's a good experience. You wanna give that good experience along with some great content, of course, and a killer offer if that's what you got for them. So go try it out yourself. Go check out easywebinar.com slash hustle. That's easywebinar.com slash hustle. All right, all righty. So that is the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode, enjoying it. Hopefully you did. I'm pretty sure you did if you lasted this long. And go check out Easy Webinar when you get the chance. And we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. For taking the time to listen, we want to give you something a little bit special. Every single episode that we do, we actually have somebody on our team take notes. We basically have a Cliff's Notes version of every episode where you can go and find all of the tips and tactics that they laid out, all of the resources that they laid out all the good stuff from this episode we actually have a nice simple notes version that you can find on our website so go to evergreenprofits.com find this episode that you just listened to and uh, give us your email address and we'll send you the notes thanks for listening